Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Cutter One. I am your host, Jay Just Jay, your resident culture warrior, your resident maker of trouble or troublemaker, however you want to call it. Anyway, I hope you're all doing well as we are officially now in the, in the middle of the week. It is hump day, everybody. Thank God. Hopefully it'll just get easier from here on in as we coast into the weekend, coast into another re relaxing weekend, hopefully for everybody. Anyway, I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're all doing great. Um, all right, let's get right into it. We've got some interesting, an interesting article here. This is coming to us from the good folks over at MovieWeb.com. And this is Lord of the Rings, Why a War in the North Movie is WB's Best Bet. Uh, the Middle Earth film, uh, a Middle Earth film about the war in the North, which happened concurrently with the Lord of the Rings, is a surefire bet for Warner Brothers. And this is by Kyle Kruska or Kruska. Um, I believe we've read articles from Kyle before. But anyway, let's get into this one. Um, with the recent announcement that Warner Brothers and New Line Cinema will be developing new movies set in the Middle East set in middle earth there has been a lot of speculation about whether these new lord of the rings movies uh, about what these new lord of the rings movies will look like wb already has uh one deeper cinematic explore exploration into the world of jrr tolkien set for 2024 as the anime styled the war of the rahiram is set to release in april of that year beyond that however very little is known about what specific stories will will be making their way to the big screen next. We do know that these stories will likely be set in the third age of Middle-earth, as Amazon has already staked its claim on the second age with the Rings of Pewter, um, or as I like to call it, the Amazon, Amazon shit show. Uh, and WB does not have the adaptation rights to most of the first age stories from the Silmarillion. All right, let's stop right there for a second. Um... Amazon, it doesn't matter what Amazon claims to have the right to, whether or not they they feel they exclusively have the right to the Second Age. Um, the appendices in The Lord of the Rings and Hobbit um, are what would give, essentially, um, WB the right to make films set within the Second Age. Now, in terms of the First Age, I mean, they could, right? They could do whatever they want, theoretically. Um, in terms of dipping into it, it would just be a matter of, you know, how how much they could do so i think if they just referenced it they they would be you know they could do that um but we'll, we'll have to wait and see all right uh what wb and new line do have the rights to adapt are any stories presented in the hobbit the lord of the rings and the additional appendices provided at the end of the latter like i just said um, within those bounds, there are still a lot of great stories to be found, especially uh, specifically from within the appendices, which provide a lot of back a lot of backstories to the world, its characters, realms, and peoples. Specifically, those spotlighted in the core story of the Lord of the Rings. While WB is already pulling the story of Helm Hammerhand out of those texts for the war of the rohirrim another great story that should be prioritized is that of the war in the north the war in the north refers to the other major battles fought in the war of the ring which were happening concurrently with the main events shown in the lord of the rings by exploring the various other battles against Sauron during the War of the Ring, WB and New Line could revisit the main story of the franchise without directly remaking Peter Jackson's films or copying them too closely. Here's why a War in the North film is the best idea to revitalize the Lord of the Rings on film. Okay, but like I said, it's all about what's in the appendices. That's what will determine what um, WB and New Line have the right to make. It has nothing to do with Amazon. OK, um, so as they just sort of point out and agreed with me on. So, um, yeah, it could be interesting. Let's let's see. Uh, let's see what they do. Um, a film depicting the northern fronts of the War of the Rings would allow for several key characters uh, from the Lord of the Rings and Hobbit films to return. While the core groups of characters in the Lord of the Rings, such as Aragorn, Frodo, Gandalf, Gimli, and others, would be off the table as their journeys at that point in time are already well documented in the Lord of the Rings, numerous other characters from those films and the Hobbit films play central roles in the War in the North, specifically the likes of Galadriel, Celeborn, 
Thranduil and the dwarves of Erebor are on the front lines of those battles. This would allow for numerous actors from both of Jackson's trilogies to repri reprise their roles, which is a damn good point. I will give I will concede that one. That's a good point. Two key actors that would need to return to the War in the North film are Kate Blanchett, who played Galadriel in both The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, and Lee Pace, who played Thranduil in The Hobbit. As the rulers of Lothlorien and Mirkwood, respectively, those characters play main roles in the story of the War in the North, as their lands are central to the battles that uh, occur throughout it. Martin St uh, I want to make sure I get this right. Socus is is the C silent? Is it like Socus? Uh, could also return as Celeborn, while several of the dwarves from the Hobbit films could also reprise their roles since their home of Erebor is also a key location during the war. By including Mirkwood and Erebor in a film like this, it would provide an opportunity to more thoroughly explore the homes of Legolas and Gimli as they hail from those two kingdoms, respectively. On top of that, it would more thoroughly connect the story and characters depicted in the Hobbit films to the world of the Lord of the Rings. One of the largest beneficial factors of telling the story of the war in the North is that it also provides a lot of freedom to introduce new characters or bring back other familiar faces. That's because, while a general outline of the events exists in the appendices of The Lord of the Rings, it's not nearly as detailed as the core story is. There's a lot more wiggle room to play with the story, the characters within it, and how its events unfold. As such, other key, other key characters from previous films, such as Elrond and Radagast the Brown, could be included as well. Numerous fan-favorite characters from the books that didn't make their way into Jackson's films, such as the le legendary elven hero Glorfindel and Elrond's twin sons Eladan and Elrohir, could also be added into the story in order to gain more interest from the hardcore fans. Familiar story and continuity. It's clear to see that WB envisions The Lord of the Rings as its next big franchise. Recent reports have indicated that the studio is hoping to make The Lord of the Rings series into a major franchise similar to Star Wars. Looking at the current Star Wars model, this likely means that WB will be developing many different prequels, spin-offs, and potentially even sequels to The Lord of the Rings. It can also be assumed that these new, new films will be set within the same universe and continuity as the Lord of the Rings and Hobbit trilogies directed by Jackson. The War of the Rohirrim is already confirmed to be set in the same continuity as Miranda Otto, the actor who played Eowyn in the Jackson films, is set to reprise her role as a narrator for that film. Now, we're not suggesting WB adapt the video game The War in the North from the early 2010s as that particular iteration of this story was pretty messy. What we are saying is that a version of those events, which is more accurate and faithful to Tolkien's writing, would make for a great film. By telling the story of the war in the North, WB and New Line could stick close to the central story of the Lord of the Rings that fans are familiar with, thoroughly keeping the new film connected to what people have loved before while still telling a new story. The film would depict the other major battles that happened in Middle-earth at the end of the Third Age, which were only ever alluded to within the Jackson films. As such, it would take audiences to familiar places, such as the Lonely Mountain from the Hobbit films and Lothlorien from the Fellowship of the Ring while also allowing for new locations in Middle-earth such as the Iron Hills, Rune, and Mount Gundabad uh, to be highlighted as well. The biggest benefit of making a film about the war in the North is that it would be a simple way to reintroduce audiences to the cinematic world of Middle-earth since the story is set against the same backdrop as the Lord of the Rings with the forces of Sauron being the main antagonistic presence. It's a much easier story to jump into. There's no need to spend a ton of time introducing the audience to the world or a new time period because they are already familiar with that particular point in time in Middle Earth. Since audiences already have the knowledge of what else is going on in the War of the Ring at that time, a War in the North movie can jump right into the thick of the story. All right, uh, interesting take, interesting take. Um, 
Yeah, I could see that. I could definitely see there are definitely upsides to telling that particular story. Um, I think that it should be a trilogy. Um, if you could adequately stretch it out to be a trilogy, um, I, I don't think a one-off movie would do it justice. You have um, there are mentions of specific battles that happen um, in Lothlorien and Mirkwood. Um, and so I, I wouldn't want you to have to rush through those, right? You could have those sort of be big moments the same way the Battle of Helm's Deep um, was a big moment in the Two Towers. And then you had uh, the Battle of Pelennor Fields uh, was the big moment in um, in Return of the King, as well as the uh, the the Battle at the Black Gate. Um, so So I think if you stretched it out in a similar way, there's a potential there. For, for that to actually work. Um, I wouldn't be opposed to it. I'm not opposed to it on the face of it. Um, it's it's an interesting idea. There is a lot of upsides. I will agree to a lot of the the positives that, that um, Kyle is making in this article in terms of it does save you from having to completely reintroduce people to something. Um, as everybody knows what's going on with Frodo and them at the same time. So you would you would just have to find a way of referencing what's going on with Frodo and them. So this way the audience are, the audiences would be reminded that these things are happening simultaneously. But other than that, I think it's definitely an option that, uh, you know, if I was in charge of coming up with WB or New Line's uh, next Lord of the Rings uh, series of films, it is definitely something I would keep on the table uh, as it has a lot of potential. Then again, at the same time, the appendices do allow WB and New Line to go in and if they wanted to do a trilogy of films on the fall of Numenor or on the uh, the, the War of the Last Alliance, um, that is there too. Um, they do have, uh, they pretty much have the ability to access anything that Rings of Pewter is currently accessing. Um, so, so I mean, th there's a lot of potential there. I, I, I think right now there's still... They're probably looking at it in the same way, like, what's the best thing that we can come out of the gate with? Um, it might be a war in the north for the reasons specified in the article. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below. Do you think that uh, the new line, the Warner Brothers new line cinema film should be a war in the north um, film or trilogy? Um, and which would you prefer? Would you prefer them to do it as a one off film or would you prefer them to try and stretch it? out to be a trilogy um that sort of takes us back to middle earth without having to reintroduce us to everything um let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below i'd be interested to get your take on this one um overall I, like i said i can't disagree i would definitely like i said it, they make some valid points um so i would definitely if i was uh, a wb executive right now i'd be keeping that option on the table so it'll be interesting to see what you guys uh, have to say down in the comment section below. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. So that's going to do it for this one. Let me know. I will uh, I will definitely be paying attention to your guys' opinions on this one. Um, remember, if you like the video, like the video. If you feel like sharing the video, by all means, feel free to do so. It helps the channel. It helps us with the YouTube algorithm. It helps us get seen, get eyes on. Um which is always helpful. Um, if you have not subscribed yet, I would hope that you would consider subscri subscribing and joining the Army of Beautiful Badasses as we uh, hold the line in the defense of the professor and his works, um, as well as all the works of high fantasy that we've come to enjoy and love over the years. Um, and if you are a returning subscriber, I thank you truly from the bottom of my heart. You are freaking awesome. All right, and that's going to do it for this one. I look forward to seeing the, the discussion down in the comment section below. Remember also... If you haven't, that we have a Discord, hop on over and join the Discord. Um, start up some conversations. We're a fun bunch. Join in, start a, a, a topic, and, and we'll, we'll all jump in and chime in, and it'll be fun. So head on over to the Discord. I'll put the link down the link down in the description below. Also, don't forget we do have some merch. So if you are considering somehow supporting the channel in some way, um, you know, buy yourself a, a cool looking shirt or something, you know, or, or phone case or something over there. Um, the link will also be down in the description below. All right, folks, that's going to do it for me. Remember to be good, be awesome, be safe, but more importantly, stay more dorkish. Until next time, peace.